In this video, I'm going to show you a more complex lookup problem. Now, I don't know what better way to call this. I'm just going to explain to you the problem. The raw data set that we have comes in in this format. It's a matrix and it has a list of dates on the left hand side, the name of the division on top, so in the column headers, and there is the list of apps inside this matrix. Okay, so the way it's organized is that, for example, for Blend, the live date of Blend was on this day and it belongs to the productivity division. Fighter went live on this day and it belongs to the games division. The challenge for us here is to create a report that has the list of apps, so basically a list of the ones that are inside the matrix, and we want to get the division out of it. So we want to get the column header. Now, you can see the challenge in this, right? that these apps, they are not on one specific column or one specific row, but they could be anywhere inside this matrix. Now, which lookup formula could give us text back? Because division is text, right? Which one could help us do that? The index formula, right? Because that has no problems to give back numbers or text. And in this case, we want a division back. So if we do use index, how could we go about using this function? So let's take a look at the arguments. The first argument is the array. Array is the area where my answer is. Okay, it's the map to find the answer. What could that be? Only this, right? I don't care that I have apps here. So they belong to the lookup argument but my answer could never be an app or it could never be a date. So I don't need to highlight any of this. I just need to highlight these three headers. Okay, so I'm just gonna fix that. Now the next argument is for rows. Well, I have just one row. I wanna give back the rows. I don't necessarily need to write anything here. I can just skip that argument. And the third argument, that's the key here, right? Which column? does it need to give back? So this is column one, column two, and column three. So for blend in this case, I need to get a one here. Obviously I want to get this in a dynamic way, but for 2020, I need to get utility. So that's sitting in the third column. I need to get three back. Okay, so I need to come up with a formula that's gonna make this part of the index formula dynamic. Which formula could we use here? Match is the one that normally comes with index, right? So let's see if match can help us in this situation. First argument for match is the lookup value, which in this case is our app. The next argument is the lookup array. Okay, so where is that? Is it here or here or here? It's all of this. All of this, including all the way down, basically up to there. But what's the problem here? The problem is that match is a one-way street, remember? So if you watch my index and match basics video, you're gonna see that match can only handle either a single column or a single row, but you cannot give it a matrix because it doesn't know should it look this way or should it look this way. Now, if I can't give it a matrix, I can't just give it one specific column because that could sit in any column, right? So match is not an optimal function here. So let's try to think of a different function that could give these indexes back to the index function. So for the other function, I'm gonna write it here. And once we get it sorted, then we can plug it in in the index function. One function that I can think of is the sum product function, because that's a great formula for handling matrices and also for handling exceptions. So you can easily look up something in a matrix. For some product, the key here is that every time you are putting in the equal sign there because you're looking is this value equal to a value in a matrix, always put it it's in its own brackets. Okay, so that's why I'm opening the brackets again. And then I need to put the matrix here but just for the sake of explaining this function, I'll just grab this part of the matrix out, okay? But once we see that the formula works, 
then I'll expand it to the whole range, but I think it's gonna be easier to follow if I do it this way. So I'm gonna fix this. Now we're checking if this matrix equals blend here. Okay, so let's just leave the formula, close, close, bracket, and let's just leave the formula and see what we get at this point. Okay, to put a border here, just so that we can see until where I have this formula. And later when we see it works, I'll expand it to the whole range. Let's take a look at what we can see in here. So I'm gonna highlight this, including the bracket, and I'll press F9. Okay, so we get a list of false, and there has to be one true, because that's the blend right here. So that's the true that's associated to this. And it's giving us zero because it can't add up true and false values. I press Control Z to go back, so don't press Enter. Now to make it translate these to ones and zeros, which are things that my formula can work with, I can just do some sort of multiplication on it. So if I put two minus sign or double negation, I can get that done. So if I highlight this now and press F9, you can see the false values became zero and the true value, the one true value became a one. Actually, what I'm gonna do is copy this. I'm just gonna press Control C and then press Control Z to go back, press Enter. Now I'm gonna paste my result here because it's gonna be easier to track the formula. So I'm gonna highlight the area first because I'm pasting an array. You need to highlight first, then put in equal, Control V, and now Control Shift, Enter. Okay, so it's easier now to see what value is associated with which of these cells, and that's the one that's associated with blend. Until now, I have a matrix that gives me zeros and one. So now what I need to do is to try to get the column number for this. So if it's in this list that I want it to be a one, and if it's here, I want that number to be a two, and here I want it to be a three. What I can do is to use the column function and I'm just gonna put column with these three, right? But column of these three, I mean, this is gonna be column two, three, four, right? But I want to get one, two, three. What I can do is to deduct, okay? Either one cell before or to deduct this cell and then add one because you can't have zero, one, two. Okay, now because I have a matrix, I'm just gonna go ahead and deduct this cell right here where the date is sitting, but not this cell, the column that this cell is on. Okay, so I can also fix this with the F4, fix this one, and I don't want it to multiply by this and then do minus this. I want the result of this to be multiplied by this one, so I can put these in brackets. Okay, now because I'm anyhow performing some type of mathematical operation and this matrix here, I don't need these minus signs. So I get one. Let's just make sure that to see what we get out of this matrix here, I'm gonna highlight it including the correct brackets and press F9. So you see I get one, two, three. What it does is it multiplies this by one, this by two, by three, one, two, three. So the moment there's a one here, that's gonna be multiplied by two, and that's gonna give us two back. If there is a one here, it's gonna give us three back. So that's the information that we can use for the index function. But let's see what is the ultimate answer of this. Well, in this case, it's a one. Let's just change blend to 2020. Okay, I get a three. Right, that's exactly what I want for my index formula. Okay, so just control Z to go back. What I have to do is I'm just gonna copy this, press escape to leave, and for the one argument here, that's the way I'm gonna make it dynamic. Okay, so, and if I've done my fixing right, so everything seems okay, then I can pull it down. But before I pull it down, remember I restricted my range to D13. I have data until 45. So let's just update this one 
to 45. That's the only thing I need to update, right? Because my index is this, the sum product, my lookup values are here, the columns are fine, so that should work. Let's pull down. That Tanox is utility, Misty Wash is utility, Twister, that sounds like a game, but that's in the games. So that's how you can use some product inside the index function to solve this type of complex matrix lookup problem. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you like these type of videos, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can get updates when new videos like this one come out.